Hey, what's going on, Fight Fans? Welcome to our YouTube channel. Hope you're doing well. Today, we'll be talking about one of the best and longest serving fighters of the UFC, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. He is a former interim lightweight champion and currently competes in the lightweight division and is all set to compete for the title in the near future. Poirier has been one of those fighters who has made it to the top the hard way, dealing with multiple setbacks along the way. But how did Poirier manage to become one of the best lightweights of all time? What does he like to do outside the octagon? And what role has his wife played in his career? Let's get straight to it. Number 8. Career Accomplishments Dustin Poirier started his MMA career in USA MMA and later went to fight in the WEC. After a few fights in the WEC, he made the move to the UFC in 2010. He debuted in the featherweight division of the promotion. His career in the UFC didn't quite take off as expected as he gained some victories coupled with some defeats. His first defeat came at the hands of the Korean Zombie, where both fighters served up a memorable fight. Poirier displayed grit and tenacity in that fight, but Zombie overwhelmed him with uppercuts and shots to the body that just wore him down. Ultimately, Zombie caught Poirier in a darts choke, submitting him in the fourth round. He would also suffer a decision loss to Cub Swanson, which made fans doubt Poirier's potential as a UFC fighter. Later, he bounced back with some victories which propelled him to a fight with Conor McGregor at UFC 178. The fight got tastier as both fighters exchanged verbals to each other before the fight, which increased the anticipation of the fight for the fans. Many believe, judging by the body language of Poirier, that McGregor had rattled him and got inside his head. When that fight began, McGregor started on the front foot and caught Poirier on the head with his elbow and finished him off in the first round with some punches. Sensation looking to finish the fight. That's it. It it's is over. all over. Just like that. That was a huge blow to Poirier's ambition of being a top contender for the title. And after a while, he made the move to lightweight. Poirier made an instant impact at lightweight by defeating the likes of Joe Duffy and Bobby Green. As the Louisiana native was gaining some momentum, he hit a roadblock by losing to lightweight contender Michael Johnson in a fight where Poirier was favored to win. Johnson caught him with a quick left hand which knocked Poirier out instantly. That defeat turned out to be the start of a resurgence. Poirier won several high-profile fights which made fans take him seriously as a contender. His wins over Anthony Pettis, Eddie Alvarez, and Justin Gaethje made him a serious contender for the title. The theme of those fights were the same, as Poirier started slow, where he found himself in moments where he was on the back foot, only to stand strong and finish his opponents. His fight style is built with a heavy pressure game, with jabs and a straight left hand used in good effect. He is also one of the best boxers in the UFC, and that is quite evident with the way he finishes off his opponents, with a flurry of shots mixed with high pressure. Furthermore, Poirier is one of the most tenacious fighters of the UFC, as he has the ability to take hits and grind out victories. His fight against Justin Gaethje proved that attribute, where his left leg was compromised with Gaethje's heavy leg kicks. But Poirier, like always, managed to grind through the pain and won the fight by defeating Gaethje via TKO in the fourth round. That win pushed Poirier into title reckoning and cemented himself as one of the top lightweights of the current era. He got his first title opportunity against Max Holloway, the reigning featherweight champion at that time. Holloway had made the move to lightweight after having dominated the featherweight division and was looking to make more history by winning the interim lightweight title. The pair had met before in the UFC where both were relatively new to the fight game. At that time, Holloway got submitted by Poirier via armbar in the second round. This time around, the fight was expected to be a close one. Poirier, known to be a slow starter in his fights, made an uncharacteristic quick start as he rocked Holloway on several occasions and stayed in control of the fight in the first two rounds. Holloway came back in the fight with a one-sided third round, but at that night, Poirier was not to be denied as he came back strong and won the fight by unanimous decision. By that, he became the interim lightweight title holder and congratulated his wife for being there with him during the tough times. That win set up a blockbuster fight with the undisputed lightweight champion of the world, the Eagle, Khabib Nurmagomedov. The Eagle was undefeated in his MMA career and had dominated every opponent he had faced. Many believe that Poirier might be a good test for the Eagle, as he is not the one to give up that easily due to his tenacious fighting style. 
The fight was booked at UFC 242 in Abu Dhabi. The fight had a lot of coverage all around the world and the stage was set for Poirier to make history and become the lightweight champion of the world. Also the fact, there was the added incentive of becoming the first fighter to defeat the Eagle. A lot was at stake and the fight started with Khabib imposing himself on Poirier at the beginning. Poirier was having trouble dealing with the Eagle's pressure, but he managed to stand strong and had Khabib under pressure for a while. You would be surprised, but he caught him in a guillotine choke and for a moment, it felt as if he might submit Khabib. But like always, the Eagle got out of the hold. After some ground and pound and superior ground control, Poirier succumbed to it and was submitted in the third round, which helped Khabib retain the title. That loss affected Poirier as he couldn't hold back his tears and he felt he had let down a lot of people that night. I'm gonna have to live with tonight for the rest of my life. I worked, you know, 14 years. Mixed martial arts to get here, 41 fights, and uh, you know, I just gotta get home and see what's next. I'm not fighting just to fight, I'm fighting to be the world champ. He would bounce back with wins over Dan Hooker and Conor McGregor. In his second fight against McGregor, Poirier fought smart and finished McGregor in the second round of the fight. They renewed their rivalry at UFC 264, where Poirier once again got the better of McGregor but this time via a doctor stoppage as McGregor broke his left foot at the end of the first round. These wins have made the diamond the next contender for the title and many believe he has got a good chance against the current champion Charles Oliveira. The diamond also holds the most finishes in the lightweight division and is also amongst fighters who have a high number of wins in the UFC. His current MMA record stands at 29 wins and six losses. All these feats translate into huge money to know the diamond's payout Stay tuned. Number seven, salary. Poirier currently earns a good salary. His last fight against Connor earned him a base salary of 1.1 million. And if we add pay-per-view points, then that number goes up significantly. He is expected to earn more in his career as he still has a lot more years ahead of him in the fight game. His career earnings stand at $4 million. But apart from that, Poirier has 12 performance of the night bonuses to his name, which adds to his career earnings. To know his list of sponsors, you would not want to miss this next segment of our countdown. Number six, sponsorships. Poirier in his own way likes to associate himself with brands that he uses on a regular basis. His list of sponsors include Samsung, Vanquish Fitness, Celsius Energy Drink, and many other brands. His sponsorship with Samsung has a story to it, where Poirier appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast and was seen using a Samsung Android phone. He also said on the podcast that he would continue to use the Android and had no intentions of switching to another phone. You're one of those guys. I'm just used to it. I don't want to switch it up. I get it. I'm just used to it. To which Samsung approached Poirier one day and offered him a new phone and rewarded him for his loyalty towards them by sponsoring. He was also sponsored by the water management and generator company Tomahawk Rentals and training gear giant Everlast. The apparel wearer company Robert Graham is in association with Poirier and has developed limited edition tees in partnership with this Good Fight Foundation, about which we will touch upon just a little bit later in the video. The list doesn't end there, as he is also sponsored by Venom and EA Sports, but that is through the UFC. Expect the number of sponsors to increase significantly in the coming years as Poirier continues his quest for the championship. Number five. Hot business opportunity. Poirier lately has set his sights on becoming a businessman, and he has made his move by getting into the hot sauce business. He has named it as Poirier's Louisiana Style, and he has brought some bottles with him at the weigh-ins of UFC 257 and UFC 264, where he presented Connor with a bottle of his hot sauce. Poirier has partnered with a Canadian company known as the Heartbeat Heats, and the hot sauce has been getting favorable reviews by experts. The diamond has things going for him in the business front as well. Number four, the Good Fight Foundation. Apart from being an incredible fighter, Poirier seems to be a good person at heart as he dedicates himself into philanthropic efforts outside of the octagon. He has a charitable foundation of his own named the Good Fight. You wouldn't believe this, but the main talking point of the Poirier vs. McGregor trilogy was based around McGregor not living up to his promise of donating money to Poirier's foundation. In fact, Poirier took to Twitter to say that McGregor's team was not reachable when they contacted them for an update on the donation. But now things have settled down and Poirier has moved on from it for good. The foundation is located in his native Louisiana and him along with his wife Jolie actively participate in the growth of it. 
He has extended his humanitarian effort to Uganda as well, where he has developed water plants and has donated money to the needy. After his UFC 242 title fight, UFC President Dana White and the champion Khabib Nurmagomedov had donated $100,000 to his foundation, The Good Fight. The Good Fight Foundation started an actual nonprofit, stop doing it out of my name, give this thing its own identity and, and, and see how organically we can grow this and help as many people as possible. And now it's amazing, just two years ago that was an idea and, and now it's an actual nonprofit and we're doing things all over the world. Talking about the role of his wife in his life, keep watching the video. Number three, his wife's influence. Dustin's wife, Jolie Poirier, has been a major support system in his life. He credits Jolie for his success inside the octagon. He even acknowledges her in his post-fight interviews and also several other podcast appearances. They were childhood sweethearts and she had been with Poirier through his days of struggle. Poirier once revealed in an interview that Jolie used to drive him to the training centers and pick him up when he wasn't at his financial best, and now whatever he has done in the sport is largely due to her support back in those days. I just want to dedicate this fight to my wife. We've been together, ten, been married 10 years, and if it went for her, I wouldn't be here. There was days I went home, busted and broken, and she believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. This is her belt as much as it is mine. I wouldn't be here without her. I love you, Jolie. The winner and new champion, ladies and gentlemen, Dustin Poirier! Fun fact. Poirier in several of his interviews has revealed that the loss to McGregor at UFC 178 was the turning point of his career, after which he made a shift in mindset which allowed him to be a better fighter. As a matter of fact, that seems to be true as Poirier has been a completely changed fighter since that fight. Number two, cars. The Diamond has an impressive collection of cars. He owns a Rolls-Royce Ghost Series 2, which cost roughly $311,000, and a Cadillac CT6 of around $80,000. The list doesn't end there, as he also has a Ferrari and a Dodge Challenger to round up his set of wheels. We wonder if there might be more to come in the future, as Poirier continues to shine in the UFC and in his business endeavors. Number 1. Plans to direct his own show Dustin's ambitions don't end with his UFC career and the hot sauce business. He has revealed his plans to direct a show that will feature the daily lives of Louisiana natives. He gave us a little glimpse of the show in one of his interviews by saying that it will revolve around his friends training in the gym and then having a bite of their favorite Louisiana food and delicacies. He also plans to direct a cooking show in the near future. One thing's for sure, Dustin has his hands full. Finally, after looking at the Diamond's career so far and his business exploits, his net worth stands at a respectable $5 million, with that number set to increase as the number one ranked Poirier chases UFC gold. Well, all right, we have come to the end of our video, but before leaving, we would like to know what has been the key factor in Poirier's resurgence as the top lightweight of the UFC? In what way has his wife Jolie influenced his life? And what do you make of Poirier's business ambitions? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to our channel. Till next time.